What else do you think that the media is not getting right in its coverage of what's happening, either distorting or omitting? I think there's a lot of erasure, particularly with uh, Native narratives, um, Kanaka Maoli narratives. Um, what I see a lot, you know, it's, and it's difficult for me, I, just as a, as a Kanaka, as a, as a human being, I know there's a lot of grief and tragedy that's going on right now, and um, there's a lot of trauma, as Kanyela mentioned. Um, and at the same time, I also know that a lot of times with these kinds of crises, we forget about the on the crises that was already happening prior to this this occurrence. So, uh, my my parents are houseless. They were houseless during COVID, um, and during that experience, there was a lot of anti-houseless things that we had to deal with. A lot of you know poverty shaming and whatnot. And then this event occurs, and it affects so many people from all sorts of uh, walks of life, not just Kanaka. However. I guess the social infrastructure, the media infrastructure that was already stigmatizing houseless folks, who are majority a percent of Kanaka Maoli Hawaiians, that kind of erasure and that kind of stigma continues. And so we're seeing this, this lack, I would say, um, particularly for the local news media outlets, of narratives that center how this fire, how this disaster is connected to all the things that we talked about right now. Um, most of the things that most of the information that I'm getting is from activists and grassroots folks on the ground who are talking to the continent because that's one of our folks on the U.S. and other in the international realm, um, because that's almost that's almost the only way that we can get our own stories. Here's like getting it out of that hegemony, that oligarchy control of, of the narrative. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a really big thing. How Hawaiians have been dealing with, we 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 are the most harmed in these situations to come from the transformative justice language. We're the most harmed, um, we're survivors, and we've been facing this, these kinds of di disasters for years because of imperialism and colonialism, and they've exacerbated our, our, our social issues, our political issues. That should be centered um, a lot more. And there's a reason why that's not happening, because the groups who, like the Big Five, um, who overthrew our kingdom, who continue to oppress our people, control the media, so. Yeah, well, speaking of the media's focus in this tragedy and this outrage, this is a tweet from uh, someone who's a, uh, a New York Times journalist uh, who, ret who tweeted, um, on Friday, Alicia Stratton searched desperately through the wreckage of her Lahaina home for the Rolex watch her parents gave her when she graduated college. Suddenly, her fiancé pulled it from the ashes. You found it, she said, choking up. It was damaged, but still legible. So, Kaniela, you uh, expressed some frustration uh, with that tweet. Uh, I believe you tweeted in response to that, um, there are uh, Kanaka Maoli bodies in that wreckage. How dare you post this? So, can you explain your frustration with that tweet? I mean, that's what it is. Like, the fuck? I mean, it's it's like, I guess it's cute and kitschy if if you're a New York Times reader who happened to be like upper middle class white readers. I mean, this, if this was like three months from now, it would be distasteful. But right now, when people are still looking for their loved ones, it's fucking disgraceful. Like these people, I mean, I mean, when we talk about like oligarchs control the media, we don't mean. We, I mean, we do mean like billionaires buying the the media. Like that that is actually happening. But there's supposed to be like a firewall between the the ad room and the newsroom. And if, if, if you ever pick up a New York Times uh, any day of the week, you'll see you'll see New York Times like paid article. I mean, Rolex paid articles in it. Uh, right, right. And then like this, like it's like so blatant, you know, out of all the times, like when all the eyeballs are on Maui, you like place this ad for them and. It's disgusting. I don't know what else to say. Like, well, yeah, I mean, it's just like, like you said, there are still people missing, and there's still people missing now, and we're supposed to get touched or excited about a found, ridiculously expensive watch. Yeah, and it's like we're talking about it. I tweeted about it. It went very viral, and like that's what they want. So it's like it's hard to. It's like the systemic problem problem of like journalism for clicks and 
and understanding their audience. Their audience is people who care about who might have got a Rolex from their parents as well, and they right. can relate to that's it. That's the truth. Yeah, that's true. So like, right. as long as we have media that's controlled by corporations, uh, we should expect this kind of thing. Um, yeah, like if we get if we fire this reporter, the next one would do the same thing. Oh yeah, it's not right. Like it's systemic. It's not about this one random reporter, right? It's a, this media yeah. ecosystem in which that something like that would even happen. Um, and he's not acting in a vacuum either, right? I mean, he's he's a complete plug. Like, he still deserves to be reprimanded, don't get me wrong. Sure, but it's not just one person. He's not like an outlier. He's not a, what is it? It's not a, a, a bug. He's a feature. Yeah, yeah, exactly.